Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Tesla on Mare. My name is Leon and today we finally have a project after a long time of no videos. Unfortunately, the weather in Germany is getting worse and worse because autumn is coming. And do you know what that means? Building Tesla coils. In the last few videos we worked with a mini dual resonance salt state Tesla coil. We use half bridges and try to lower the frequency of the secondary coil as much as possible. But is it possible to do it in a less complicated way? Actually we want only one thing, massive lightnings. To make the whole thing a bit easier we need to use a higher frequency. This means that the secondary coil is much easier to wind. Thick wire just doesn't break as fast as thin wire. A second change we can make is to use only one MOSFET instead of a half bridge. If the coil blows, we will only have one broken MOSFET and not two. So we can play with the coil twice as long. Do you follow me? But I can tell you one thing. If we do everything as usual, feedback oscillator, GDT driver and just a MOSFET in the end to amplify the signal, your MOSFETs will die faster than you can look. Ask the colleagues here. Brain. But there's a good solution, thanks to an absolutely smart guy named Gerald D. Ewing, the Class E amplifier. Actually, we just modify our power amplifier a little bit. And it basically looks like this. Q1 is our MOSFET, for example the RFP460. L1 is an inductor, its value is critical. C2 is kind of coupling capacitor, its value is not critical. L2 and R1 represent our primary coil. C1 is a tuning capacitor, with it we tune the oscillating circuit. The goal of the circuit is to push the phase towards zero current switching by adjusting the component values. Zero current switching means that the MOSFET only switch when there is no current flowing through the MOSFET. This way the MOSFET will work efficiently and doesn't blow up so easily. Now I will show you what I built. On the board you can see two voltage regulators, a 74HC14 which generates a square wave signal from the feedback signal and a GDT driver, a UCC37322. The feedback comes from an antenna, yeah I know, that's not quite perfect yet but it works. The setup offers us two possible modes, the CV or continuous wave mode and the interrupt mode. If we want to interrupt the driver, we have to put this small board here into the jumper and remove this jumper. The interrupter is the any 555 interrupter with which we can control the pulse frequency as well as the pulse width. In this video we will run the call only interrupted for now because in this mode the lifetime of the MOSFET is much longer. The GDT driver supplies the GDT which has 10 turns on the primary side and 13 turns on the secondary side. Next comes the Class E amplifier. The primary coil is connected to it with only one turn. As secondary coil we use this one. It has a resonant frequency of 1.3 MHz. Yes guys, this is our setup. The driver is supplied with 15 volts. The Class E amplifier is supplied up to 80 volts via a variable transformer. And now we come to the schematic. If you want to build a circuit, I can recommend you to orientate yourself on my component values. The fine tuning is up to you. Before we start with the discharges, I want to show you again on our oscilloscope how far my circuit works in class E mode. Yellow is the gate signal, blue is the voltage curve at the capacitor between drain and source. So guys, enough theory, let's go! That is cool, isn't it? Let's try a different top load.
So guys, this all works very well for now. Let's see if we can get even longer lightnings, maybe in the next video. If you don't want to miss it, like this video, subscribe my channel, comment this video, and then guys, we will see us in the next project.